But now we are learning, no, no, no. That's not true at all. لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد implies no matter what your financial situation, no, ma- no matter what people think of you, whether people think you have an easy life or hard life, or whether you think you have an easy life or hard life, each and every human being is created in an intense struggle. In intense struggle. And the way Mufti Muhammad Shafi commented on this ayah is very beautiful. He said, no matter where you come from, human beings never stop worrying. Human beings are never, ever, ever free of worry. The richest one is worried about what, how their relationship is with their wife or their child or their parents or something or the other. Maybe it's something trivial to you. But it's something that bothers them and increases their blood pressure and they have to take pills for it. And it's laugh, you know, the, the sh- things that stress people in different parts of the world are drastically different. Right? Somebody is stressed out that their curtains don't match their carpet. And they're stressed out about that. Somebody is stressed out that they don't have a Blu-ray DVD player versus the old school. You know, they're stressed out about that. What's going to happen to their old collection? And it's stressing them. And in some other part of the world, somebody's stressed out that their child doesn't have food to eat tomorrow. Or there's going to be like, you know, the Muslims in China today, whether or not their family is just going to be attacked and destroyed overnight. Because of the chaos that's going on among the Uyghur people. May Allah help the Muslims there. Right? So, you know, di- different levels of stress. Somebody sitting in their bedroom stressing. <laughs> Right in an air conditioning room, in conditioning room, stressing about their 401k, which has gone down from 800,000 to 700,000. Oh, boohoo! Right? You would say boohoo, but they're losing sleep over it. They're gone. They've gone crazy over it. The idea is: is it still something that's stressing the human being, keeping them from being relaxed, keeping them from finally being tranquil? You think the the one who doesn't have it thinks, when I get it, I will have tranquility, right? And the one who has it says, man, you don't know. There's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress. So Allah lets you know, no matter what your situation, you are in kabad. You are in enormous struggle. Now the other thing that's really important to note here is, there are two kinds of, two paths that are going to be talked about in this surah. The path of Allah, the, the right way, right? And the path of other than Allah. You could follow a path which you follow Allah's dictates, and that's going to be a struggle. Or you could follow what you want to do. But guess what? Both of them are a struggle. Neither of them is easy. You think one is easy and one is hard, but in both of them there's trouble. Both of them will lead you to stress and difficulty and labor, etc. Right? None of these paths are easy. So might as well struggle for something that will lead you to something better in the end. Right? People run away from the commandments of Allah thinking it's gonna bring difficulty to life. Even Muslims today, or even you know, non-Muslims for sure. For example, we find non-Muslims making comments that are close to Islam, that are close to Islam, making comments like, yeah, I really like your religion, it makes a lot of sense, but it asks too much of me. It's asking me to change too many things. Right? It's too hard. So the way they're doing things, they feel this is ease, and the way Islam is telling them to do things is difficulty. Allah's commandments are difficulty. In Surah Al-Nisa, Allah says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah intends to lighten your burden from you. Meaning your life is full of burdens, you follow His commandments, and it will become... Light. And this is in the context of ahkam, rulings that Allah passes in the surah. Allah knows what's better for you. The medicine tastes sour, but it's good for you. It brings ease and comfort and relaxation to you. So we'll, we'll talk more about that as the surah continues inshallah ta'ala. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. Bima qaddama, what did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? What took precedence? وَمَا أَخَّرَ And what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait. I can do it later. The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. Or, you know, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. تَقْدِيم and تَأْخِيد Not the grammar one. The one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're going to meet those deeds on judgment day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. 
wa wajadu ma amilu hadira then you standing face to face in front of their salahs if your salat was lousy you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat staring right at you that's what it's going to be if you were lying cheating backbiting angry arrogant condescending whatever you were we start looking right at you in the face and then you're going to say mali hadha al kitab that's that's the reality of it bima qaddama wa akhar what did he make a priority out of what did he put on the back burner this is one of those life transforming ayat the human being will be thoroughly informed this was your priority this is what you spent time on this is what you did with your free time this is what you thought can wait you had all these dreams i want to memorize the quran what did you do for it how many seasons of how many tv shows did you watch instead how that was a priority for you what do you want to memorize oh, but it can wait though inshallah one day when my heart is purified then i shall start you know bima qaddama wa akhar bal al insan no no yes on that day the human being will be given thorough news but it's not like the human being's blind now rather the case is that the human being ala nafsihi against his own self basira is fully insightful there is one person that knows so much about you and nobody else knows about you and besides allah and that's you you have an insight into who you are what your flaws are what your limitations are what your capabilities are what your strengths are what your weaknesses are what opportunities you avail what opportunities you get lazy about you know that about yourself more than anybody else and you and i decide to lie to ourselves we just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves about ourselves and about ourselves with allah we don't want to have that honest conversation for some people all they want at the end of their life what is success to them maybe i'll own a house that's success for them maybe if i have this much money that means i have success maybe if i got married to this one or that one maybe that's that means i have success but i go back to what i started with there are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum just the minimum but i am here to tell you the young people in the audience today allah has blessed you and i am telling you he expects great things from you he does not expect the minimum from you there are so many muslims the only thing left of islam is their name that's the only thing left they don't care about salat they don't care about halal and haram they're far from this deen what can i do to further this deen What can I do to I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we are in, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, "I want to graduate and get a job." Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job, you got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. you're sitting there at the desk wasting your time you're going to lose that job somebody else will come and do it for you you will not keep that job even if you qualified qualifications are not enough you have to do the work allah azza wa jalla is keep giving all of us he's already qualified us we are people of la ilaha illallah we are already qualified but that doesn't mean we're doing the work if we don't do the work if we don't make we don't concern ourselves if we don't care then you know what's going to happen in tatawallu yastabdil qawman ghayrakum thumma la yakunu amthalakum you turn away and allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves and they will not be like you they will not be lazy like you and those are when Mus- when young muslim people have real iman when young muslims have real like, strength in their belief then they can they have the power to change the world they have the power to make the world a, a better place but when young muslim people don't have real iman they don't have real conviction then they are a waste of space they are a waste of society a waste of a generation 
the only thing in their life, the, only, the biggest, the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out? The most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out? The next most important thing is, man, I wish I had that car. That's it. Your life doesn't go any further than that. My teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you throw a hook and you climb. If you throw a hook not very high, then you will only reach that much. You can't reach any further. If your goal is money, if your goal is a six pack, if your goal is a car, if your goal is a promotion, if your goal is entertainment, if your goal is girls, whatever your goal is, then you're only going to get that, you won't get anything else. But if your goal is something higher, to serve something more than yourself, you don't live a selfish life. You want to live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others. That's how you want to live. Then you will benefit yourself definitely, but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher. Our deen in this beautiful ayah, Allah Azza wa describes it, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِي This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? That means you have in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam is a journey, which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday. And I'm supposed to do more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further.